Mega Man 11, the newest addition into the Mega Man franchise, is an extremely well-crafted game, especially when compared to similar games that have recently come out, like Mighty No. 9. Now, personally, I've never played any of the previous core Mega Man games, so I can't really say whether it's a true return to form or not. But besides that, I found myself really enjoying this game for what it was, without needing to compare it to any other games in this franchise. The story this game presents is pretty generic, which is to be expected. Sure, Mega Man 11 does have a bit more backstory than usual, but the main story is just the same as every other core Mega Man game. Wily steals robots, you have to stop Wily, yada yada yada. However, this game truly shines in its gameplay and presentation, which are both outstanding in more ways than one. The visuals in each Robot Master stage have their own style and uniqueness to them, and they're almost all incredible. On top of this, these stages each have different gimmicks that are only unique to that stage, which really adds a lot to their replayability. Granted, Mega Man's controls are a bit stiff, in my opinion, but the platforming challenges are well set up with those stiff controls in mind. Plus, I'm pretty sure that's how the fans wanted him to control, so it's mainly just a minor nitpick that I personally have. It didn't really hinder my experience and enjoyment of this game at all, as everything else controls fluently. It really makes you feel like Mega Man, if you catch my drift. Mega Man 11 truly lives up to the hype. People were worried that it'd end up like Mighty No. 9, but trust me, it's so much better than that. If you haven't gotten into the Mega Man series yet, this game is a great place to start, for not only is it a great addition into the series from what I've heard, but it's a very solid standalone game as well. Next up, we have Mario Party 11, <laughs> I mean, uh, Super Mario Party, the newest addition into the Break Your Friendships Over These Games franchise. I'm sure you've already heard this before from your favorite Nintendo YouTuber, but I'm going to re-emphasize it anyways. This one's actually a good new Mario Party game. What a miracle. The stupid car gimmick from Mario Party 9 and 10 is gone, the players each have their own turn again instead of moving all at once, and on top of these great changes, the game just shouts fun with every aspect that it has. I mean, just look at this presentation that it gives. From the detailed textures of the maps to the hub world itself, this game is just bursting with so much color, personality, and detail, and it's definitely the best that Mario Party has looked in a long time, if not the best it's ever looked. Now, as for the most important part of any game, Super Mario Party's gameplay is almost as good as its presentation. Not only has the main game mode been restored to old school glory, but the game packs on so many more game modes that each have their own unique twist on the Mario Party genre. You have Soundstage, a short game mode that fires back-to-back -back rhythm games at the players. Genuinely fun, but like I said, it's a bit short. You have Co-op Mode, which in all honesty, I didn't really like it, but I can see the appeal behind it. Then you got Partner Party, an extremely different take on the main party mode that presents free roam movement and team-based mechanics. And finally, you got all of the minigames, all 80 of them, which consist of some of the best minigames that this series has put out, in my opinion. If you've been waiting for another good Mario Party game to drop, wait no longer, as Super Mario Party not only brings the main game mode back, but also brings so much more enjoyable additional content to the table. The $60 price tag is a bit sucky, but if you know that you have a group of friends who'd be willing to play this a lot, then I definitely recommend buying it. You most likely won't regret it with this one. Just Shapes and Beats has to be one of the most self-explanatory and basic titles out of any game I've ever played, but don't let the title turn you away from this one. Rather, Just Shapes and Beats is an obscure gem that's actually one of the games that I've played and enjoy the most on my Nintendo Switch. In Just Shapes and Beats, you play as a blue square, and the whole goal of the game is to avoid these red shapes on screen, all while musical beats are bumping in the background. The game doesn't get any more complicated than that, but it doesn't need to. Every aspect in the gameplay, while simplistic, has been nearly perfected, which I really need to give the game devs credit for. Trust me, I've personally experienced bad controls when they should be so simplistic to program, so I appreciate it when controls feel extremely responsive and tight. To add on to this, the visuals in this game are amazing. Each stage has its own personality and incorporates how they use the red shapes in a different way, which really adds a lot to the gameplay. And as for the soundtrack, it's truly the highlight of this game. From soft and smooth EDM to fast and hard dubstep, the game has it all, and every single track is absolutely amazing. Heck, even the music specifically composed for the story campaign hub is bumping. And yes, this game actually does have a story, and it's somehow not even that bad. If you're into EDM music and the bullet hole genre, then Just Shapes and Beats is a game you totally want to pick up for the Switch. Even if you've never tried bullet hell games, I'd still recommend buying this one, as the amazing visuals, tight controls, and outstanding soundtrack really shape this game into one of the best rhythm titles that I've ever played. What would really make it even a better game is if they could just make and release that gosh darn level editor already. Like come on man, we've been waiting like forever for that. 
And the last game that I'll be reviewing for this month's Rapid Fast Switch Reviews is Super Inefficient Golf by 3-4 Big Things. Now you might be saying, Super Inefficient Golf? What the heck is that? I don't know. I, I just saw it on the eShop and I was all like, nice. What can I say, it looked genuinely fun and for only $5 at the time, I was willing to give it a go. And was it fun? Eh, not really. For starters, this game is incredibly short. There's only 36 different holes that you can select from with no easter eggs or cheat codes. Yep, the game straight up tells you that on a loading screen. As for the gameplay itself, I found it to be extremely lacking, clunky, and unpredictable. Most levels can be just cleared by shooting the ball over everything else and landing it in an unprotected hole. It's not awful, I guess, like, the gameplay can be sort of fun at times, but it just ends up feeling more clunky and empty than the former. Plus, I feel like I was just ripped off this game regarding the visuals and presentation. Looking at the screenshots on the eShop, one would be led to believe that this game looks absolutely gorgeous. But nope, they significantly degraded the visuals for the actual game, so that they just look basic and unpolished at best. To top this all off, the same music track is played through every single one of these levels. Every. Single. One of them. The same track. It's not even a good song for crying out loud, man. And let's not even talk about the unfinished bugginess and glitches in the game. For example, due to some weird reason unknown to everyone except the game developers, every single hole is on a floating square of terrain which are only partially spaced apart from other holes. So when you're on say hole 5, you can hit the ball all the way to hole 7, and if you land it on the green, it'll count as inbounds, which totally has to be either a glitch or just an oversight. It's probably the latter, but that alone should tell you how unfinished this game is. Oh, none of the developers have actually ever played real golf, huh? Yeah, that would explain a lot now, wouldn't it? Super inefficient golf may look like fun, and that $8 price tag may be tempting, but in the end, this game just feels like a concept test rather than a full fleshed out, enjoyable game. The most redeeming part is that the concept is clever and unique, but the clunky gameplay and controls take that concept and make it unenjoyable for the rest of us. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this October edition of Rapid Fast Switch Reviews, and if you did, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and click on that notification bell to be notified and never miss another edition of these unique reviews. Are there any specific games coming out next month for the Switch that you all would like me to cover? Make sure to comment down below with the answer. And with all that said, Ramble Gaming, over and out.